What's up, fam? It is Michael Babbitt, and I'm taking you through seven days of sound design. That's right, one week, all Omnisphere. I've created seven different types of sounds, so each day I'll present a new sound, and I'll show you how it was made. Welcome to day two. We're going to learn how to make a noise riser. Ooh. This is epic. Now you may have noticed the ping pong delay that happened at the end. That was added by the modulation wheel and I will show you later on in this video how that was done. But before we get into that, let's go through each of these layers that make up this patch and you can see how it was built. To visualize this, we're going to click on the Layers button, and you can see A, B, C, and D layers are all noise, hence the reason we are calling it a noise riser. Okay, so why do we need four layers of noise anyway? Well, let's answer that by starting with layer A. You'll notice I have a ring modulator enabled, so let's click in there and see what we've got. You'll notice a blue line here in the frequency slider. So let's right click or command click on it and show modulation. You can see if we click on mod envelope one or modulation envelope one as the source, it is modulating the target, which is ring mod frequency. And if we click on the envelope zoom, we can see what it looks like. Hmm, wish I had my BMX bike here. Apart from the global envelope zoom, we can also zoom into the individual modulation envelope here on the right side. Now you can see that our modulation envelope is 16 beats long, which means that our riser will always finish after four bars. Let's go through each of the layers and listen to them soloed. We'll turn off everything but A and start there. Notice how a lot of modulation changes were occurring in that one layer. That's because Mod Envelope 1 is controlling a lot of things, and I'll show you that in a minute. There is a second Mod Envelope in play here. This is Mod Envelope 2, and it's set up to control amplitude. So basically it's an on-off switch, and I'll show you how that works a little later. All right, let's go to the filter section. Um, stereo phase filters being used. Both cutoff and resonance are being modulated by, ta-da, mod envelope one, of course. And uh, if you look at the resonance, I've got a little bit of a different setting here. It is still mod envelope one, but it is inverted. That means that while cutoff is going up, resonance is going down. Hmm. Now let's see what layer B is doing. Let's turn off layer A and solo layer B. And since we were in the filter section, let's just jump to that right now. I'm using a stereo two pole filter here, which of course is being opened by mod envelope one also. Now let's play layer B, but click on mod envelope two so you can visualize this on off switch I was telling you about earlier. Notice how we have a long flat line at the bottom and then up here at the top it curves. Well that long flat line is where the sound is open and then it hits that wall, shuts off, but the curve prevents it from clicking. Yes, yes, I figured it out myself. Now let's venture over to layer C. We're going to solo that and you'll see something here. Speaking of C, I have altered the shape of this noise waveform. See? Look at that. Different. It's all the way to the other side, and it does change the sound entirely of the noise, which is important because we have four freaking layers of it. Also different is I've got a different filter, state variable high pass filter, and of course that's going to cut out some of the low end frequencies. You can see here mod envelope one again, modulating the filter cutoff, and since it's inverted, it's going to move in the opposite direction. Layer C is a little crispier, got some high frequency uh, color to it. Now let's check out layer D, solo that, and we've got a wave shaper. What's in here? But first, let's look at my big fat power juicer low pass filter with the filter resonance turned up high. At 100 points, if you can guess what our cutoff filter is being modulated by. Okay, we're going into the wave shaper now. What's in here? What's in, what is in here? I really haven't done much at all. I just have the frequency turned up a little bit on the shaper and it's crazy. The difference this makes to the sound. Now, if 
you didn't have a subwoofer turned on during that, I recommend you rewind, turn it on, and enjoy the massage. Now let's jump into the modulation matrix zoom so you can see the source and target modulation controls really quickly. Modulation envelope 1, modulation envelope 2 are represented, and wouldn't be the same without a modulation wheel assignment in its controlling the auxiliary send. On page two, we have more modulation sources set up. I encourage you to spend some time in the modulation matrix zoom so you can see how everything is being modulated. Okay, on to the effects. Auxiliary send. This is what our modulation wheel is controlling, and it is sending through the BPM delay. With the modulation wheel in the up position, you get that BPM delay to finish it off, and with the modulation wheel down, it ends cold. All right, let's take a look at the effect settings for layer A. The rate knob of the auto pan is being modulated by, ta-da, mod envelope one. Then we have a 5 dB gain on the EQ at 148 hertz. So we've pushed it up a little bit. And over on layer B, I've inserted an analog vibrato, and this gives it some motion. The depth is turned all the way up, a little bit of rate, so it's, it's not too fast. Then down here on the Studio EQ, I've dropped the gain on about 47 hertz, so it's uh, rolled off a bit there. And jumping over to layer C, you see there's a lot more stuff going on. I've inserted an analog flanger. The rate knob is being controlled by mod envelope one. It gets faster. The speed knob of the vintage tremolo, again, faster. Um, and then we've dropped the frequency at 49 hertz with um, a little bit of a curve on it. So we're trying to cut out low frequencies on a couple of these layers. And then on layer D, I do exactly the opposite. I give a 5 plus dB boost to that magical 58 hertz frequency, giving you a nice massage. So now that you've seen all the layer effects settings, let's go to the common effects. This is basically the master bus. And you can see I've got an analog phaser here. And if we drop down here to the power filter, you'll see the cutoff knob is being modulated. That again, mod envelope one. And as that mod envelope ramps up, the master cutoff filter opens. Let's hear it without. And now with it on. And there you have it. My Noise Riser. Thanks again for joining me, Michael Babbitt, for seven days of sound design. I will see you on day three. Until we meet again, virtual hugs, everyone.